Hello, my name is Kristen Lopez and today I will be giving you a presentation on The Economist that I was given, John Kenneth Galbraith. Um, this is for an economics course at El Paso Community College. The CRN is 23888 and this is for the 2016 spring semester. So let's begin. Alright, so the introduction. So John Kenneth Galbraith was born on October 15, 1908, and he lived all the way until April 29, 2006. He was an economist, a public official, and a diplomat. Galbraith was a professor at Harvard in economics, and he also wrote several books, novels, articles, and essays all on economics, and, well, not just on economics, but he also did several other topics as well. And he even worked under several of the presidents, including Franklin D. Roosevelt, Harry S. Truman, John F. Kennedy, and Lyndon B. Johnson. And his ways of writing and his abilities to portray um, the ideas of the economist, that's what made him known as the best known economist in the world. Because of the way he presented his ideas, like everybody just was able to get it. And like he just portrayed them so well. And he was just such a great writer. And he even received the Medal of Freedom and the Presidential Medal of Freedom for his public service and contribution to science. Both are very pre prestigious acknowledgments, so it's um, a big thing that he actually got those two because it's very rare for people to get those. And even though he did contribute mainly like for econo economically, he also contributed a lot to the government, which, I mean, was a very great thing because it just meant he was a very well-rounded person. Okay, so his early life. So Galbraith was born in Ontario, Canada, so originally he was a Canadian and he did become an American later and he was raised in Dunwich Township, Ontario. So his family included his parents, Sarah Catherine Kendall and Archibald Galbraith and his siblings were Alice Catherine and Archibald William. And when he was younger, he would rather be, well, even um, when, as to the point when he became a teenager, he wanted to be referred to as Ken rather than John. And um, his father was a farmer and a school teacher, while his mother was a homemaker and a community activist. And unfortunately, she passed away by the time he was 14. And um, it's very possible that that's the reason why he decided to do what he does, because um, he wanted to, I guess, leave off where his mother was and make her proud. And so, um, when he was younger, he went to a very small school. It only had one classroom in it. And um, he also attended Dunn High School and St. Thomas High School. And in 1931, Galbraith graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Agriculture from the Ontario Agricultural College. He majored in... Um, in animal husbandry. And then later on, he went and received a Master of Science and a PhD in Agricultural Economics from the University of California in Berkeley. And um, while, he was, while he attended there, he, they even the school published one of his um, economics papers that he actually collaborated with one of his professors. And then later, he became a professor at Harvard University and Princeton as well and um, he also decided to travel to get inspiration for um, his economics and um, in this he got his inspiration um, doing a fellowship with the University of Cambridge where in England where he was inspired by John Maynard Keynes, Keynes which was a guy who was very well known in economics and he changed the economic foundation there. And so um, he also got inspired at an international economic conference in Europe that he was able to attend. And so he joined the United States Department of Agri Agriculture and um, he served as an editor of Fortune magazine. And he also helped a lot with the stabilization of the economy during World War II because that was right after the Great Depression and um, he, con he contributed a lot of the ideas that came into stabilizing the economy because they were really down. And so we go to the next slide. 
Okay, so his main contribution to economics. So John Galbraith didn't really like come up with like one thing. He was mainly like a writer. He wrote several books that inspired many people. And so um, they say that um, a lot of the time he went against the conventional wisdom. So when people said that they knew something, they're like the smartest person, they were set on ideas, he was able to um, basically talk them out of it. Like he knew what he was talking about and he was not going to leave until you were convinced that his ideas were right. And so um, he wrote, well, I mean, he of course wrote several books, but three of his greatest books were The Great Crash of 1929, um, The Affluent Society, and The New Industrial State. And so um, out of these three books, his greatest book was The Affluent Society. And um, basically this was um, saying that um, the economy, the economy went beyond um, beyond the productivity, um, which basically meant that you eliminate the insecurities and you um, and you basically eliminate like racism. Like you don't f focus on one um, on one the greatest. Um, race in the society or the richest people you conform to everybody and so so how is this related to what we have learned all right so first um, one of the biggest things we learned during this class were the choices we make so when you're making economic decisions you need to be able to know well you need to be able to weigh out your options like what do I need and what can I, what do I want? Because a lot of times what you want, you're not able to afford. And then when you can't afford stuff, then you're not able to get what you need. And so um, he actually came up with this theory called the theory of firm, which was saying that um, the society um, needs to be able to benefit economically as a whole, not just according to one person. So it's like saying, um, yeah, maybe this economic decision will um, benefit the rich people in town, but how will it benefit the poor people in the town? So, in other words, you can't just benefit one group in society. It needs to benefit everyone as a whole in order to say that it's like a good decision that will benefit their economy. And so, then the next idea that we've um, learned is economic growth. And so that's a big thing that we've learned because, I mean, um, there's several ways to make the economy grow. And um, we've had to learn those throughout the whole economics class. And so um, another theory he learned was the dependence effect. And so basically um, what he says is that um, we really should depend on our government, like in making our economic decisions. Like they should have a say so in what we do, which is something that was really controversial because like we have things like the laissez faire that like um, that. Let, a, let the government not be as involved in some of the economic decisions that we make and our businesses and everything. So that was a big thing. So um, I guess everything combined together, he said that the government should be involved. But I mean, throughout the years, people have said what the government should be involved in and what they shouldn't be involved in. And so then the last thing we have is the fiscal policy, which is also the... Um, the government having a say so in what we do um, but also um, he says that different cultures um, have different economic ways and so um, what may work for one city or state may not work for another because it's like saying in Texas we have our um, needs our wants our the way our environment is so like um, as opposed to like Alaska, Washington, like any other state, like let's say Texas to Alaska. Texas is super hot. Alaska is super cold. They're obviously going to need to invest more on like jackets and stuff to keep them warm where, as opposed to us where we're like having to find things to like cool us and like um, to like not be able to like get dehydrated. So we need a lot more water and all. So like, I mean, every culture is different. So if we're going to want to be able to grow as a as an economy we're gonna have to be able to make decisions based on where you live 
um, in the different cultures because not every culture is the same. So if we're going to want to advance, we're going to need to be able to um, go based off of each culture rather than um, run the whole um, U.S. as like the same. So you need to be able to um, adapt to each environment and each culture. And so now um, this is a work cited. And so these are the three sites that I use to look up all my information. I mean, Wikipedia is always the great first place to go. Um, then there was um, one newspaper about him and one just about the different um, economist views that he had. And yeah, that's my presentation on John Kenneth Galbraith. And um, I hope you learned as much as I did um, as to how he helped our economy. Thank you.